Well, good morning and welcome to our service of uh, worship with um, Holy Communion. Um, apologies for being a little late. Uh, I'm afraid I'll let the time uh, get away from me, but um, we're gathered together. Um, welcome from us to uh, our brothers and sisters there from uh, St. Michael's uh, in Lyndhurst, uh, Christchurch in Emory Down uh, and Bank, and uh, of course, All Saints uh, at Minstead. Um, all the notices uh, you should have um, are in the uh, newsletter, which again uh, was emailed out, I think, on Friday. Um, so, uh, but you need to know perhaps that this week I'm taking a bit of a break uh, and uh, until Friday morning. Um, uh, of course, Friday is Peter Watson's funeral uh, at 2.30 um, at the Creme uh, up at uh, the Test Valley. Um, so uh, the priests in the pandemic um, will be some repeats going forward. Um, there will be some uh, Denzels this week as well. I know due to public demand, um, people are enjoying following um, Denzels exploits. Um, although actually for, for children, I'm pleased to see that many um, older children, shall I put it that way, um, are enjoying um, Denzels uh, recordings. Um, uh, there won't be anything uh, this evening and there won't be uh, any Teze on Thursday evening. Um, but other than that, this week the um, Imagine meeting will take place uh, on Tuesday at 10.30 and the Still Prayer meeting will take place on Thursday at 9.30. Um, and again, details as to how you can access those meetings are here. Uh, a quick notice for all church wardens. And that is that I'm hoping that we can all get together by Zoom uh, on Friday morning, on Friday morning uh, at half past ten, just for a quick catch up. Um, and uh, as we follow the developments from the Church of England, no doubt more to come this week in relation to um, churches being open for prayer. Not yet, um, but um, it's coming. Now, with that in mind, uh, this morning, um, I'm not sure if Kate has done it yet. I wouldn't be surprised if she hasn't because she's terribly efficient. Um, but I've been to each parish church in the benefice this morning and recorded a prayer um, for that particular parish church um, as we look forward to um, all that is ahead. Um, and those will be uploaded onto um, the website as well as to uh, your own parish Facebook page, I believe. Anyway, that was, uh, that's what I was doing. That's why, frankly, I'm a little bit delayed this morning. Um, wanted to get that out and get that done and we, as we pray together um, in preparation for uh, all that is um, ahead. So welcome to um, Ira who's going to, that's Anne's mum, who's going to be reading the gospel this morning and Anne will be um, reading the collect as we go through our service. The service sheet, um, this is my story. Uh, it's been emailed to you. Hope you've printed it off and that you can share in our in our service. And uh, just one other note, and that is um, from Peter and Peggy. Bless you, Peter and Peggy. If you are watching this morning, thank you for all that you're doing um, to keep people connected uh, and in touch uh, and encouraged and comforted. Um, but a message from Peggy, and that is that if you know of anybody who would appreciate. Um, um, a phone call, a supportive, friendly phone call, then please let her know uh, or let me know. Um, if you come across someone who's either in distress or anxious or just would like to talk to somebody, um, and that's reason enough, isn't it, just to talk to somebody in this period of isolation, um, then let Peggy know, please, and uh, they will arrange for one of the lay pastors um, to be in touch. So thank you, Peter and Peggy, um, for all uh, that you continue to do. Um, for us. As we uh, lead into worship this morning, we're going to sing two um, brief choruses, Father We Love You uh, and uh, Reign in Me, two choruses, um, the first ones that appear on your orders of service. So let's just um, be led um, by the Holy Spirit into God's presence as we sing together, Father We Love You.
Sovereign Lord, reign in me. Exalt him in this song. Reign in me, sovereign Lord. Reign in me. Thank you for joining us for worship this morning. I already mentioned those in our benefits, but we do know that there are those who are worshipping with us from further afield. Um, those, of course, who um, are in our own communities, um, but those who are um, overseas too. And uh, again, Wayne, if you're with us from Canada and others from California and uh, uh, Italy, uh, well, Southampton, wherever you are, um, you are very welcome. And we pray that God would speak to your hearts, to our hearts, um, as we look at his word this morning and as we worship him together. We welcome in the name of Christ, God's grace and mercy and peace be with you all and, and also, also with, you. with you. So we sing our, <coughs> our hymn, um, Holy Spirit, Living Breath, of God. This may be new to some of you, um, but it is a song that we'll be uh, singing um, in, uh, across the benefits as we return to worship together.
Friends, we worship with Christians near and far, living and departed, old and young. Those with others today and those in isolation. God's word is for all of us. May it be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. And so we have placed an open Bible on the table along with three candles. And so we pray, Lord, speak to us, that we may hear your word. Move among us, that we may behold your glory. Receive our prayers, that we may learn to trust you. Amen. And our collect for today. Risen Christ, by the lakeside you renewed your call to your disciples. Help your church to obey your command and draw the nations to the fire of your love, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. 
So we now turn to uh, God's Word, and if you've got uh, Bibles with you, which I hope you have, Bibles to hand, um, we're in Acts chapter 17, and beginning to read from verse 22. Acts 17, verse 22. Paul then stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus and said, Men of Athens, I see you very religious. For as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, To an unknown God. Now what you worship as something unknown, I'm going to proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by hands. He is not served by human hands as if he needed anything because he himself gives all men life and breath and everything else. From one man he made every nation of men that they should inhabit the whole earth and he determined the time set for them and the exact places where they should live. God did this so that men would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from each of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. Therefore, since you are God's offspring, you should not think that divine being, the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by man's design and skill. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof to all this to all men by raising him from the dead. When they heard about the resurrection of the dead, some of them sneered, but others said, we want to hear you again on this subject. At that, Paul left the council. A few men became followers of Paul and believed among them. One was Dionysus, a member of the Areopagus, and also a woman named Damaris, and a number of others. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. And so we sing our next hymn, which is Come Down, O Love Divine. Come down, O love divine. Seek thou this soul of mine and visit it with, with thine own ardor glowing. Oh, comfort and draw near. With Thank you. 
Gospel reading. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. <clears throat> Glory to you. Glory to you oh if you love me, you will obey what I command. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counsellor to be with you forever. The Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will, will be loved by my Father, and I too will love him and show myself to him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, to you o, Christ. o Christ. Come down, O love divine. Seek thou this soul of mine and visit it with thine own ardour glowing. O comforter, draw near. Within my heart appear and kindle it, thy holy flame bestowing. And I speak in the name of him who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit, our one true and living God. Amen. Amen. I don't know how easy you find obeying commands. The idea of following commandments or commands smacks of, of an authoritarianism, authoritarianism which seems to be at odds uh, with what Jesus has been saying to his disciples in the upper room uh, on what we refer to as Monday Thursday. He says, if you love me, you will obey what I command. He has already tried to calm troubled hearts. He says, don't let your hearts be troubled. He has, amongst his disciples, encouraged faith, personal faith. You believe in God, believe also in me. He has assured these desperate disciples that his work includes making preparations for their life with him after death. He says, in my father's house. There are many rooms and I'm going to prepare a place for you. And again, there in John's Gospel, chapter 14, as we read last week, he holds their relationship to him. That even though he be tried and crucified, he will be raised from the dead. He will ascend to the Father's right hand. Remember, which is where Stephen saw Christ. But Jesus will come back and take his disciples to be where he is. How comforting is that? that where I am, he says, you may be also. And then he says this, to the same disciples, the same moment, the same room, the same place, if you love me, you will obey what I command. You will obey what I command. This statement seems to be at odds with the gentle, affectionate and personal encouragement he's given to these troubled souls. And here you might think he has to go and spoil it all by getting unnecessarily authoritarian and heavy. If you love me, you'll obey what I command. And as I've been thinking about this passage, this one sentence um, has remained with me. And it's that that I want us to think about this morning. But it is important that we begin by putting this somewhat abrupt statement that Jesus makes into context. 
You know, it is easy, and as church, we manage to do it. It's easy to leave people with the feeling that Jesus is harsh, insensitive, and, as I say, authoritarian, only interested in gathering around him a group of yes-men, disciples, both then and now, men and women, who will simply do as they are told without question. So we must understand this then, that when Jesus says, if you love me, you will obey what I command, I think he is underlining what he has just said. We didn't read it this morning. We concluded with this verse last week. But there in verse 13, this is what Jesus says to them. Before he says, if you love me, you will obey what I command. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. Ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. Ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. There is a sense in which this is a commandment. There is force in this statement. Ask me. Ask me and I will do it. There is a clear direction, clearly with consequences. Ask for anything in my name, I'll do it. And if you don't ask in my name, by implication therefore, it will not be done. Let me take you back to Luke chapter 11. So I tell you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek, you know these verses, seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks the door will be opened. And what father among you, he says, if a son asks for fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? So if you are evil, says Jesus, and know how to give good gifts for your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? And then here in our Gospel reading for today, Jesus says, And you will ask the Father, and he will give you another counsellor or comforter or advocate to be with you forever. I was always brought up to believe that it's wrong to ask. <laughs> Had to wait until it was offered or wait until it was given. But here Jesus is giving us almost, yeah, yes, let me say it, he's giving us a commandment. And a failure to do what he's saying, an offering, a failure to receive what he's giving, will, be not, will not be without consequence. So when we think of disobeying God, let me ask you what you think about. We perhaps think of the Ten Commandments as a kind of baseline defining our obedience, the quality of our spirituality, both individually and as a church, even um, as, as the world, as creation, as God made the world. So when we think of disobeying God, is it then that just the Ten Commandments that we think about? No. We may believe that the traditions of the church define what must be done. And very often the way that we worship, the things that we do, are often couched with a sense of commandment, that we must do these things, or if we don't do these things, there will be consequences for us. We believe that the traditions of the church define what must be done. And to deviate from patterns of worship practice for generations is an act of disobedience. Do you feel that sometimes when you suggest we do things differently? Very often we can be kind of you know, victims of the righteous tutting that goes on. Oh, have you no idea? We've always done this. And we couch what we do in the context of commandment and failure to do it or suggesting change. We couch that in the context of disobedience. Let me say on that front, friends, that following this period of separation from one another and the suspension of meeting together and doing church together, I want to say this, we cannot return to a way of doing church that we have sanctified to the level of holy, untouchable and unchangeable. I'm going to say that again, that when we return together as church, gathered together, we cannot return to a way of doing church that we have sanctified to the level of being holy, untouchable and unchangeable. And if you think that's what church is, now let me give you a little bit of a warning in advance. You're wrong. And so am I if I think that, that the church is somehow untouchable and to change anything that we do, what the church does, what it sounds like, what it looks like, is a sin. 
we have discovered, haven't we, new ways of communicating. We've discovered new ways of showing comfort. We've discovered new and different ways of confronting distress at a level most of us never experienced. And we've discovered that perhaps we've been too content in the way that we worship, in the way that we witness and work in our communities, with, dare I suggest, little success in relation to growing the kingdom of God. And so it is time then to reflect on how far we have drifted from the church Christ had in mind when he says in Matthew 16 verse 18, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not overcome it. So what are we to confess? That we've placed too much importance on the traditions of the church and been unwilling to change what is familiar and comfortable and safe? Well, perhaps. That we've broken any or all of the Ten Commandments? Well, maybe we confess that too. But I think the thing that we must confess, we must confess, is that we have not asked God to give us his Holy Spirit. Do you see that from the passage we've read this morning? We have therefore not received the counsel that he gives, the comfort that he provides. And we've forgotten the things that Jesus said, things that Jesus says later on, the Holy Spirit will remind us. We've lost a sense of what is true. And most importantly, and in my own heart, most regrettably of all, we, like so many today, are living as orphans, as though we have no father, no family, no sense of place, permanence or purpose. Have we been living without Christ? Oh, that's a, a serious question, isn't it? Have we been living without Christ? If you go into the church at St Michael's, you'll know that there is that lovely um, Leighton um, fresco behind the altar. And I remember saying one Sunday morning, um, where is Christ? As people visit our churches, where is Christ? Do they see Christ? And it almost turned into a bit of a pantomime because somebody said to me, he's behind you. <laughs> and they were referring to Christ in the fresco. But that's not what I'm speaking about. I'm speaking about felt presence of Christ, something which was so real during the Welsh revival and during other revivals of the church. Christ becomes real and present, made present and real by the pouring out of God's Holy Spirit. So have we been living without Christ? For without the Holy Spirit, remember, who is Jesus' love gift to his disciples then and now, Christ will be forever hidden from us. Not just behind you. Let me find the words that uh, were read this morning after our first hymn. Christ be with me, Christ before me, Christ behind me, Christ in me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ on my right and Christ on my left, Christ when I lie down, Christ when I arise, Christ in the heart of every man who thinks of me, Christ in the mouth of everyone who speaks of me, Christ in every eye that sees me, Christ in every ear that hears me. I arise today through a mighty strength, the invocation of the Trinity, through belief in the threeness, through confession of the oneness of the creator of creation. Christ, is that how you know him? Go in that way. Then it's time that we prayed in obedience for God to pour out his Holy Spirit upon us. Let's consider the possibilities ahead of using our church buildings, not as we want, but as God wants. As we consider the possibilities of being church in our communities, not as we want, but as God wants. As we think how we worship, not as we want, but as God wants. As we reflect on how we witness of his grace and mercy, and the power of God working in our communities, not as we want, not as we plan or design, but in keeping with the will of God and the will of Christ. So let's not be disobedient. Let's not imagine or attempt any of this any longer in our own strength, according to our own desires, defined by our own minds. 
But let's ask Jesus. Let's ask Jesus for this gift and see what happens. Let's ask Jesus for this gift and see what happens. Let me remind you this morning that the Holy Spirit is not it. The Holy Spirit is he. He is the third person of the Trinity. He is Christ's gift. Yes, comforter. Yes, counsellor. Yes, advocate. But without him, though we have our traditions, and though we have scripture, we will accomplish nothing. Though we are well-intentioned and hugely motivated, without the Holy Spirit, we will accomplish nothing. And so Jesus says, ask, and I will give you the Holy Spirit. Ask, and I will give you. Ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Then, my brothers and sisters in Christ, may we learn not just the importance of the Holy Spirit, the urgency of him coming amongst us, and all the possibilities that present themselves when the Holy Spirit is poured out upon us. Let's understand that as glorious as all that sounds, it's a glory that we will not see unless we obey the commandment of Christ and ask for the Holy Spirit. Father, pour out your Holy Spirit upon the church. Here is the Michaels and Lindhurst. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon the gathered church there, the Christ Church, in Emory Down and Bank. And Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit upon your gathered people there at All Saints in Minstead. And may we, as a benefice, not just be alive to one another or alive to our communities, but let us be alive to God. Let us feel the heartbeat of God. Let us ask him to come. Ask Jesus for the gift of his spirit. And then let's see what happens. May God bless us very, very soon. You know, we used to sing, soon and very soon, we're going to see the Lord. Well, you know, my friends, soon and very soon. We're going to see each other. But when we see each other, may it be true that in each other, with each other and for each other, we see the Lord too. May God bless his word to our hearts and us to his work and purposes. Amen. In our creed, in the Apostles' Creed, remember these words, we believe in the Holy Spirit, who the Lord, the giver of life. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. Let's declare our faith together this morning. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. God, God from God, God, light from light, light true God, God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We pause for a moment as we prepare to confess our sins to Almighty God. And as we confess our sins to Almighty God, I believe it's right that we confess our failure to ask Jesus to pour out his Holy Spirit upon us. So let us confess our sins to Almighty God. Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have failed you as did your first disciples. We ask for your mercy and your help. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins, restore us in his image and praise uh, to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed be the Lord who has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy. And in our song will we praise our God. And so may God the Father forgive us by the death of his Son, strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. Amen. We pray together. Lord Jesus, you have promised to be with us forever. Teach us to rejoice in the work and ministry of your Holy Spirit, who makes your presence real. Free us from our and help us to know that you are always nearby, that we may work with you and to your glory. Jesus, our Lord, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord mercifully, mercifully hear us. us. Lord, in you we live and move and have our being. For we are your children, and you are not far from any of us. We pray for Christians who are struggling in lonely or difficult places, for all who today feel forsaken, who are longing to know your love. We pray for all who seek to do your will and fulfil your commandments. Lord, mercifully hear us. We pray for countries where laws are being flouted, we pray for nations and peoples who are in danger of destroying themselves or others, where there are areas of civil strife and where people are misused or abused. We pray for all who seek to live, live in simplicity, gentleness and reverence, and for all who suffer for doing good. Lord, mercifully hear us. By your indwelling presence, make our hearts and our homes places of peace. We pray for peace in our communities, for peace in our relationships, and for peace throughout our world. Lord, hear us. Lord, mercifully hear us. And today we remember those who are captives to superstition or ignorance, all who have no knowledge of God, for all whose lives are empty, or filled with the wrong things. We remember before you all whose lives are falling apart, who are entering into darkness or sickness. 
especially at this time of the coronavirus. <coughs> we pray that they may each in their weakness know your strength. <coughs> Lord, hear us. Lord, mercifully hear us. We pray for all who are caring for the sick and for the dying and for those who have died. We pray for those who today are anxious for a loved one. Perhaps one they cannot be near. A time when being near is the most important thing they can do. Pray for all those who are being protected. Who have extensive restrictions upon what they can do and where they can go. We pray for our children and grandchildren, for grandparents, brothers and sisters, and parents who are separated, for all those who long in their hearts to be joined once again with those who matter the most. Give us patience, give us hope, and lead all those who make decisions concerning all that we are able to do as we move forward away from this period of lockdown. Give them wisdom, and give us commitment to keep others safe. Lord, hear us. Lord, mercifully hear us. And so if we abide in you, you are in us. We already are in the fullness of that life which is eternal. But Lord, may we know it as your Holy Spirit teaches us all things. May we grow in our faith in our knowledge of Christ. May we be gifted to serve him. And as church, to live for him. So Lord of the church, our prayer and make us heart and mind to serve you with joy forever. Amen. And so as our Saviour taught us, so we pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So ours is a story of forgiveness, but also a story of peace. Peace with God and with each other. And so in sharing our story, we share God's peace with joyfulness. So with us here now and wherever you are this morning, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and, for and so we sing our next hymn, Breathe on Me, Breath of God.
as we have prepared our table for communion this morning, Holy Communion, we also take this opportunity to offer our gifts to God as part of our worship. Thank you for those who have changed the way that you give to the work of the church. Thank you, Kate, for making sure that people understand how they can give, even in lockdown. Thank you for continuing to support the work of the church in the benefits. So, Father, we receive these gifts. We thank you that every good and perfect gift comes down from our Father of heavenly lights, with whom there is no changeableness. So thank you, Father, that we proclaim Jesus, who is the same forever. Use these gifts that he may be found, and your church built, and your kingdom come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So as we come to this uh, time of Holy Communion, um, I was encouraged this week to receive um, a text message um, from uh, uh, one of our members here uh, at St Michael's, and uh, who was out walking one evening in the week, and he was listening to, um, I can't remember what, something that he found um, on our website, something that I'd recorded. It might have been... Um, the uh, priests in a pandemic, uh, one of them last week. And as he was walking around the village, he had an overwhelming sense that these people need to see Jesus. How are they living during this coronavirus without Jesus? And it's an interesting phrase that we use a lot, that they may see Jesus. Well, we know it is the work of the Holy Spirit to reveal Christ to us. And so we pray now that God would come upon this bread and this wine and that the act of taking this bread and wine, of seeing it, of knowing that this communion service is taking place, would make Christ more real to all of us as we live apart from one another and yet united together as a community of faith. So Lord Jesus, be in this bread. Lord Jesus, be in this wine and satisfy us with the knowledge of your presence. Encourage us with the knowledge of all that you have done that we might be at peace with God and with one another. And we thank you for the work of the Holy Spirit without whom we would know none of this, or even Christ, except our thanksgiving as we share in this Eucharist together. Amen. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is indeed right, our duty and joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Almighty and Eternal Father. And on this day of our redemption, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. And he has placed us by faith once more in paradise and in hope open to us the gate of eternal life. And so in the joy of this meal, heaven and earth resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and all the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light. With signs of faith and word hope, he touched untouchables. With love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. This is our story. This is our song. Serving the Saviour all the day long. The crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. On the night that he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. This is our story. This is our song, praising the Saviour all the day long. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread and gave thanks, broke it and said, This is my body given for you all. Jesus gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it and said, This is my blood shed for you all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. This, this is, is our song, song, praising the Saviour all, all the day long. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. This is our story. This, this is our story. story. This, this is, is our song, praising the Saviour all, all the day long. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. But with favour on your people, and gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Thank you. 
In this bread there is healing. In this cup there is life forever. In this moment, by the Spirit, Christ is with us here. Remove from us, Heavenly Father, any sense of guilt that we may have for not keeping your commandments. Replace our guilt with your gift of the Holy Spirit, who brings Christ to us who receives us, welcomes us, pardons and restores us. May we be a people who learn to ask, not for what we want, but for who we need. We pray together. Lord, we have broken your bread and received your life. By the power of your Spirit, keep us always in your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. It's been great that you've been with us this morning. I can see along the top of the screen people are still joining us. Hold in your heart one another and make it your business day after day for as long as we are as we are make it your business to ask God to pour out his Holy Spirit upon us let's just do that now let's pray that just three times Holy Spirit come we just pray that gently together just three times together with me Holy Spirit, come. And again, Holy Spirit, come. And again, Holy Spirit, come. We sing our concluding hymn this morning, O Thou Who Camest from above.
in his reflection for us this week, our friend and brother Luke Augustine writes this. Thank you, Father, for reminding us that spaces, by that he means our church buildings, are dedicated to you for worship. Fill us with awe and a real sense of your presence, not because you dwell there, but because you dwell in us. And with us, you are present there. Then may God fill us. I'm asking again, may God fill us with his Holy Spirit. That when we occupy our places of worship again, God will be with us. Not because he's locked up behind the doors. But when the doors are open and we enter, he enters with us. Thank you, Luke, for your reflection this week. We ask, Heavenly Father, for such a blessing, the consequences of which we perhaps cannot even imagine. But what a blessing to receive your Holy Spirit. And the life that he brings, living water, refreshing, cleansing, renewing, growing. Give us this water. And so may the blessing of God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us in our hearts, in our homes, in our care homes, in our hospitals, with those we love near and far, now and forevermore. Amen. Let us continue in peace loving and serving the Lord. In the, In the name, name of, of Christ. Christ. Amen. Well, bless you as you leave this place of worship, as you return to whatever it is that occupies you. And I pray that you would become, yes, preoccupied with the work of God. Pray that the Holy Spirit would anoint all that we do, all that we are, that we might be effective servants, faithful servants, not just asking that God would build his church, but seeing him do it in our generation, in our community. I look forward to seeing you again next Sunday morning. We look forward to being with you. And God bless you, and we'll see you again soon.